Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I'm going to be channeling a sort of a colleague, I guess you could say, Psychic Debbie Ford. Now, when Debbie Ford was alive, I wasn't, um, I'm going to say this really publicly, a little bit embarrassed, not really aware of her all that much. And I'm not sure why necessarily. I just haven't studied or followed a lot of other psychics or mediums even early on in my psychic development and career. So I have heard of her since her death and recognize that she's done shadow work. That's kind of the, the uh, area that she has worked in. That's what I am aware of. So I'd like to talk with Debbie and chat with her about, about the afterlife for, as a psychic and as, as a, someone who can connect with the energy of beyond herself. And it would be interesting to see mm -hmm, how what her perspective is about the afterlife. Hello, Debbie, it's nice to meet you. She says, hello, Bridget. It's nice to meet you as well. She's very articulate. She's very put together. She is a bit fancy, very professional. Um, she's got short brown hair very useful looking she says yes that's she said she says yes that's the great thing about the afterlife that you can choose we can choose how we show ourselves in a form that would be recognizable and for you it's important that i show up very professional and very um, in a space where you could potentially be inspired and identify <laughs> Well, thank you, Debbie. Like my cheeks hurt so much from smiling from her energy. Like she just feels very, like I just want to smile really big. Like she must have had a gorgeous smile because it's just like really, really smile, <laughs> really smile. All right. So I know that you died of cancer and that that was a struggle for you to um, perhaps come to terms with the fact that your body was dying or that there was illness in the body, especially because you do shadow work or you did shadow work. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? What, what was shadow work and a little bit, just a little bit about that for everyone. I'm not really sure. Everybody defines it differently. You know, we all kind of put our own artistic take on things and our own perspectives on things. So uh, Debbie Ford, how do you define shadow work? It's quite simple, really. It's the balance of the light and the dark within all of us as a human being, you encounter the contrast. And because of that, there's instantly the introduction of a, a dark side or an underside, not an evil side, which I think there's often a misperception about that, but there's not, the shadow or the darkness doesn't mean evil. It simply means that which is under or below or in the shadow of. It's not about punishment or having to fix something within ourselves or find that one place where we're not right. And then once we correct that and adjust things, then everything else is better. It's not that kind of a thing. Shadow work is the willingness to show up and participate, to fully engage with the human life experience. And not a lot of people are willing to do that because with the shadow work, there is a need to be at the ultimate levels of vulnerability. And while that may be a term that is and a concept that is more popular nowadays and in self-development in the self-development arena, it was not back when I was talking about and introducing the concepts of shadow work. And so I think it does mean something different now, but I'm hopeful that this new generation, there's so much more opportunity to, to understand at a level that the mind is able to understand about what shadow is and how it can help, help the human experience. And I don't particularly feel that the spirit of things is the light side. And the human of things is the dark side or the darkness or the shadow that, that is referred to in my work from the legacy that I've left on, on, on the planet here. But it, rather, it's much more a, 
it's much more a, a way to understand t the teachings, the learning of how best we can be better versions or aspects of ourselves. And I think that's really what everyone wants. Everyone wants to, I believe, be a contributor, make a conscious connection to life as a whole in its entirety. And that means that we accept some of the things that happen and occur in the experiences that we witness as, as part of the whole of our life. And we don't make something bad or good. We simply allow and don't put a judgment or a value statement on it, but rather give ourselves personal permission to go into some of these painful spots within our lives and to uncover or discover some very powerful attributes of ourselves. And because of that, I feel that the work that I, I began as a human will live on and continue to be supportive in, in the human context and, and meaningful. I think, to, to those who are in human form. Wow. And you guys may notice, so I'm sitting out on my back deck, and as soon as I start talking <laughs> and connecting with her, the sun is like, boom, out, bright, super bright. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Okay. Wow, Debbie. All right, so can you talk a little bit about what it is that you, okay, so I keep seeing Wayne Dyer as I'm connecting with you. Were you friends with Wayne Dyer? He says, yes, Dr. Dyer and I, yes. Uh, as, aside from being colleagues, we were able to meet actually through Oprah. We met and we were on uh, many stages together. So yes, I know Wayne quite well. Yes. And, and he has an incredible, incredible library of work that is still relevant today and that will continue to be, I think, in service to humanity. So how do you come to terms with, okay, so it's interesting. So, so here's the thing, Debbie, that I find interesting is that you, you were charged with or passionate about, purposeful about teaching about the shadow of things when, and working on the shadow with our own shadows, which isn't really fun work necessarily. That's not all the yay, rah, rah work. But you were charged with that or passionate about that in your life purpose. But at the same time, you weren't able to, I don't want to say accept the cancer in your body or accept the, the process of death within your body, but that there was kind of a, a level of ignorance almost about, and I, and I do use that word intentionally because it's a powerful word, it's a strong word, and I mean it very respectfully. But it's not that as though you were blissful, blissfully ignorant about the cancer, but that you just wouldn't accept the fact that you had it and that it was something that your body was going to live and die with. And I'm curious if you feel like that was part of the purpose of the reason why you taught about shadow work, because it seems to me like shadow work would be exactly that, accepting the fact that your body has an illness and loving it and working with it through the illness and not just kind of ignoring it. Like, I, I don't understand that, like how, it seems like such a disconnect, but at the same time, it seems like an irony an irony, kind of, an irony, yeah. But I think it might be exactly on point that your life purpose was to culminate in this experience of having this cancer and not being able to accept the fact that the cancer is there. So my question to you is, 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 this, is the cancer the shadow or was the cancer and your difficulty in accepting it as a part of your life and being able to live with it and instead having it kill you was that a part of the plan? You know, was that a part of the learning for you or the purpose for you or the mission of learning about shadow work? Were you teaching about shadow work because you needed to learn about it yourself and this was the, the prime classroom for it? I hope I'm making sense. I, I'm trying to explain it in my human mind and process it in my human mind and be very specific and literal, but at the same time also be respectful as a teacher you're a teacher 
and many people looked up to you for your sh the work that you did with the shadow and and yet at the same time it seems like you died because of or in part of resisting the shadow do you know what i mean like can you talk about this as, as a beautifully evolved spirit and you look and i'm connecting you with the butterfly and you look like a beautiful monarch butterfly gorgeous orange of the sacral chakra and beautiful beautiful loving energy and i appreciate you letting me stumble through my words and trying to connect with you again i i, I mean to be I, I very much respectful and yet very obvious about this question because this is a big question like it seems like as teachers we are we are teaching people things that we have to learn for ourselves that are really important to us as spirits to learn. And we're constantly just learning it at a deeper and deeper and deeper and bigger and bigger and bigger level. Like I had a coach once that said to me, um, new level, same devil, like that you would get the same lesson in a bigger way to challenge you more, the more you grow and expand and advance. So can you talk about that a little bit, Debbie? Please help us to understand from this beautiful, beautiful spiritual teacher perspective that you have. She says, first of all, thank you, Bridget, for your courage and sharing the way you did. It's a valid question. And it's one that the mind needs to have an answer to. And I understand that completely. And yet there is an evolution to the cycle of life, isn't there? Where we do indeed learn more and more and we get more expanded. We have more questions. The, the, the small, the little questions that we seem to, to answer or divert ourselves from grow and, and create opportunities then where we have new questions and new things to discover. But yet the truth is we are all teachers. We are all teachers in some way. And we, we know that teachers must learn. We must learn, therefore, be students, become students. And this is something I know that you believe very much, is that teachers are students. Very, very much. That is a requirement. And, and you, are, you are right. I, I agree. I am in alignment with that as truth. For me personally, yes, I feel as though many of the shadow side of self, you know, so much we talk about ego or the idea of the mind and our thoughts, the powerful nature of our thoughts. And yet I have spoken about fear and how strong fear can be as a motivator and also as a great deterrent. And it shows as a protector, as a fierce protector, and yet it, it is something that keeps us so small and keeps us from, from knowing what our true power really is. And, and that includes our healing power and our healing capacity. And we are only limited by what we believe. And in my experience, in my life, I, I was afraid in very human terms. I was, I was afraid. I was afraid. I felt as though if I accepted the cancer, if I accepted it, that it would be my fate and it was my fate but i wanted to fight as much as i could and and the fighting of it isn't about being strong and pushing against it the fighting of it is about taking a stand and a place of acceptance and recognizing that the power of the faith in my body in healing is stronger than the fear of dying from cancer and in my human form, I could not reach that point. I couldn't get there. And I'm sure many others would feel the very same way. And it's not expected, I should be really clear on this too, Bridget, it's not expected that we all get here. We're not all going to get here. So you're not teaching people about spiritual concepts and healing concepts with the expectation that they will apply them at the moment they need to apply them so that they will survive. Because life isn't just about surviving. It is about being successful and happy and embracing all, all that we are given and gratitude. And that's probably one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in my, in my battle with cancer. And it was a battle. At the moment that I accepted it, I, I turned to face it and I wasn't 
truly aware of the incredible power within me to live with it. And I lived with it for as long as I could and focused on day to day as my body ached, as I felt my body letting go and the deterioration within my cells, giving up or surrendering. And you know, it, there's this game that the mind plays with that, this idea of surrender and giving up. And, and, you, and you hear about this in spiritual context, like just let go, let go and, and be free. And that's a very scary thing to tell someone when they're dealing with a, an illness that in many cases is terminal. In many cases will take their life. But the place of power is in the duration, the quality of the life that they have. So accepting the cancer wasn't the same as saying, okay, my fate is to die from this. This is going to kill me. It wasn't the same as living with a killer in my body. It was a call for a different level of perspective, of understanding, and of acknowledgement of the power of my body and the power of the presence of the thoughts that I was having. And I had to be much more disciplined and aware each moment, each day, and make choices very consciously about how I would direct my life. And that, that is the place that I needed to come to in order to truly fulfill the purpose for my life. And now I believe it's, e as you have, have mentioned and have spoken, you know, we're not that different. You do shadow work as well. You just don't call it that necessarily when you refer to clearing or when you refer to healing work. And the truth is we're really not that different in those approaches. And when push comes to shove and you're asked to really apply the deep lessons of what you have been learning about to put them into action, in a very serious way, that is when, that is when you know you are living your life on purpose. You are on purpose. Not because it's hard, not because it's easy. There's no gauge of that, how difficult or how, how gentle the process is. It's not a direct correlation. It's not a direct correlation. But for me, it felt as though, you know, we're taught to fight and to stand against and to, to, to do everything we can to, to eradicate this evil villain from our lives is cancer. And it's this intangible thing, but so is energy. Energy is exactly that and spirit is exactly that. So Debbie, do you feel like you could have saved your own life? Do you feel like you could have had a, a quote unquote miracle or connected deeper with your own healing power and worked with that and actually turned this around or lived much longer with the cancer? I did, I did. I lived as long as I could. I had wonderful healers, wonderful friends and teachers and coaches that, that supported me and prayed with me and, and loved me and, and helped me. And you know, there was a, a great deal of time that I spent in, in, inside of myself and, and in bed and in places where I was very low and in depression energy, and that is really hard to overcome. That is worse than pain energy and, and the fear energy, the fear of dying and the fear of my body not functioning. For me, the depression energy was worse. It was so much worse because it was something that I recognized as shadow. And yet I couldn't on my own by myself with all the tools and all the lessons that I've learned over all this time of teaching this, overcome it myself. But what I did learn was that it takes a community and that reaching out and asking for help and sometimes not asking, but having those friends that just keep calling no matter what and keep showing up no matter what, no matter how annoying they get, they keep showing up for you because they know you and they know what you need and they're gonna be there for you to remind you to take a stand for what you need, which is that self-care, that level of of ability to shift your thinking, to shift for a moment out of that darker place of the depression, the heaviness, heavier state, and for just for a moment, lighten into an energy of, you know, enjoying a cup of tea with a friend or, or 
standing up and moving from the bedroom out to the patio. Simple, simple things. But these are, these are the things that, that really make a difference in those times. And it's such a, they're so, they're so minute. They're so small. And this is a wonderful opportunity to explain how, to share how those really, those true, just small things make such a difference. And, and the community of, of people who loved and supported me and helped me and the healers that were, I worked with and that worked with me and that prayed with me. And I'm very, I'm grateful for that. That is something that I think everyone should have. Everyone should have that, that people, that the buzzword is tribe, referred to as a tribe. And I think it's really important to have that. And, that, and, I, and, and I don't believe that everyone does either. You know, but when I, when I left this planet, I know that I was loved and I know I loved hard and I was loved deeply and by my family and my friends. And that I left a body of work that, that I hope that can be gifted to others to help others grow, to help them grow as well. Thank you, Debbie. Wow. <laughs> wow. You're very articulate. You're very articulate. Thank you very, very, very much. Very much, I appreciate it very much. All right. Oh, I should, have, I should ask for advice. So do you have any advice for any psychics or mediums or healer types that you would give now? She says, keep doing what you're doing. Focus on where your heart is, where your heart is leading you. And don't be afraid to go into the spots that, where there isn't light, where there is unknown, where it seems like there aren't other people or where other people haven't gone before. Don't be shy about that. Investigate all of your opportunities. But most importantly, follow your bliss. Just find your joy and really live life to the fullest. Just because you're a psychic or a teacher or medium or a spiritual guide, it does not mean you are not human. It does not negate the human process and the human experience. So be sure to remember that and fully commit. <laughs> <laughs> fully commit <laughs> all right wow thank you thank you hey you guys this is Bridget at Above Life Channel and we have been chatting with psychic medium Debbie Ford I don't know if she's a medium is she a medium mm -hmm. psychic Debbie Ford in the afterlife if you're a fan of Debbie Ford and you like her work go ahead and put in the comments some of your favorite work of hers if it's a favorite book or a favorite like interview or podcast or that kind of a thing, please try not to put links because YouTube will catch that as spam. Just type it out what it is. That would be great to share it with others. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed our conversation today. Remember the purpose has been to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope because this, this right here and right now is your life. This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.